It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament and Vaughn is dominant. We're seeing here a situation that would be probably different were the stakes the same as the game's typical stakes. Uh, what I mean is, were there would there only be one winner? Would second place not matter? Um, I think the others probably would have taken Vaughn down by now or done a lot more to her than they have. As it is, everyone, they're kind of taking little pokes at her, Brezza and Otto, uh, mainly just to kind of keep themselves going, but no one's really fully tried to take her down. You would need a coalition to do that, and um, the problem with like even attempting such a thing is if one person sides with her, that person likely has a good chance of being the second place person, unless, of course, that person is Demi. Demi kind of still has nothing. So let's turn up our next card. We're at the, the position point in the game when any card we turn up could end the game if it's an event card. I maybe have mentioned that, but I really like that aspect, especially in a money game. Um, all right, so we have another mutiny. Bidding on the Parliament de Paris, this is a compelling card. It uh, would allow someone to disrupt uh, Brezza's only unit, the Brethren of the Coast there, at the cost of the card. Um, Vaughn would, would very much like to have it. Um, she doesn't feel like she needs this card anymore uh, as, a, as an additional gun to hold against his head. She also currently has, um, she could destroy this colony he's producing before it gets before it gets fully capitalized if she wants. So she has that. But if she had this as well, this is something she could use, hold on to until she had to use it. Um, but Otto's also interested in it, so he jumps in and bids one. Um, I don't think I think Demi's not that interested. He's interested in getting the bid up, but he doesn't really care that much. He's a, he's a little bit in despair. Uh, Vaughn will bid one as well, so she has the tie. Otto's going to bid two. Vaughn will bid two. Takes the tie. He'll go three. He kind of... he So Otto wants the bid to go up, but if Vaughn wants to take it, he's kind of... A, he's fine with that. She'll go three. And I think he's going to pass on that. So she spends three, has this card. This card is going to leave the game. And we move on to trading. All right, we'll draw again. Puritan Pilgrims. Otto and Cowboy are both entreating Vaughn to increase the size of their fleets once more. Um, she's debating it. Otto has a fleet down here. Um, Cowboys is here. Problem with uh, increasing Cowboys, Cowboy hasn't really messed with her yet, so that's nice. But the problem with increasing his fleet is he's her main competitor. He actually pulls in more money than her right now while the Hasendado card is still uh, on, the, on the track there. Um, Otto, she, she's mainly worried that he's going to return to pirateering or privateering, excuse me, again, because there's not a lot of ports out. So I think she's going to suggest that they wait because there's there's not nowhere really to trade with. Um, these cities are starting to get filled up already. Again, these smuggling ports, which we have a lot of those. Um, and she wants there to be enough trade to go around so things stay peaceful. Vaughn just threw down a big bid on these uh, Puritan pilgrims here. It's a piddling colony, but she she feels like she needs some more money-making capability, especially since her Hacendado card uh, keeps going under the gun. Um, she lost her mill to, to Demi last turn, and so she's getting a little worried, though. I don't know if spending this much money is really going to help. I guess it depends on when the game ends. So Cowboy threw in six. She threw in seven. He can't beat that, so she's the proud owner of Old Providence right here. Let's look at our winners and losers of trading as uh, before we get into the next year, which is a big year. It's going to be a treasure year. Uh, the Hacendado and the Huguenot refugee cards are due to come out at the end of the year. And who knows, I think the situation may be getting shaky. So Vaughn... Um, she wasn't able to fully trade with her, her boatsmen because 
people turned her down at the, the smuggling ports, so she only could fill up her own smuggling ports, which were full at the time. Um, she's since disbanded some of the units here, here to get quite a bit of money. Um, that's a big money maker for her because smuggling ports are, are pretty big on the map. Uh, there's a lot of them. Um, Otto's pulling in four now. His boats are fully trading. Demi's getting three, which is great. His colony jumped up a size at the end of last decade, so it's back where it started, back to full health. Cowboy's pulling in five, and Brezza's pulling in three. So we can kind of see Cowboy and Otto are fairly close to Vaughn, but Vaughn has these smuggling ports, which are, um, which are big. Let's draw our card. And we have crickets, locusts. Each sugar plantation is reduced to size one. We don't have any sugar plantations currently, I don't believe. Uh, generally, I think that yeah, that means they have a mill. Does this one? No, nope. horses. Yeah, yeah, no sugar plantations there. All right. Vaughn just smacked Brezza hard. First, she um, designated the, the treasure fleet and did not include him. That made him really upset. Uh, he didn't really have anything he could do in retaliation, though, because that Hacendado card is not on the map. Um, then she seized, or then she got rid of the Huguenot ref refugees. She disrupted it. This all cost her a lot of money, which is nice because I was running out of chips. Um, and then she seized the Huguenot refugees uh, using the Parliament of Paris. So she could, she could destroy the immature non-Spanish colony, and then she could seize it with that. She did a little combo move. And so that's going to probably take Brezza out of the running for a while, but he might try to do something back. Oh, she also got rid of his Brethren of the Coast with her disrupt any French cards, so this should actually be have left the game. There we go. Negotiations for the treasure fleet went like this. Uh, first, Vaughn suggested that she take two treasures and the other two would get one. They did not like that, so she suggested instead that they only pick up three treasures. They leave one treasure behind and they each get one, with the caveat that she does not have to send her own fleet uh, to pick up any treasure. Her fleet can instead be used uh, solely for trading. Um, to that, the, the fellows acquiesced and the deal was struck. We'll pull up the next card here. Ooh, some Baymen. Baymen. Let's check back in with how everyone's doing. It's uh, 1624 right now, and we are going to draw a card, but I thought I'd just update things. Vaughn is truly dominant, able to pull in so much money. She's getting more and more colonies, but she didn't get the, the Belize Baymen. Cowboy bid a, a startling amount of seven to get that. But then there's a lot of money in the game, and so it, it could pay off. Really, a lot depends on when that event card comes in and all of that stuff. Otto's doing fine, just kind of cruising along, pulling in four every turn. Demi, he had his colony reduced due to cholera, a cholera outbreak. Brezza is totally paralyzed. He, uh, he has to use all his money to keep capitalizing his brethren of the coast, so he can't even use his Mordita cards He's pretty much just stuck in holding for a, for quite a while. And that's where we are. Cowboy's doing well. Otto's doing well. Vaughn seems like the clear winner, and no one seems prepared to take her down. If they do, there's nowhere really for them to trade, because anywhere they trade is going to benefit her, except for Demi and Cowboy, which is a total of five trade that they can do. Um, Otto needs to pull in four to, to reach his full potential, and Cowboy needs to pull in um, two, and so that's that's more than than they can they can hold there. Let's pull it up, and we have a Bourbon Princess. I was waiting for a princess to come. Um, capitalization is free if you have the princess. She is going to be um, vied for heavily, and we have another cholera outbreak. This is going to be in Honduras, and there is nothing in Honduras. Well. Actually, does this count as being in Honduras? I guess it, it might. It very well might. I don't know. I don't know how this is. these zones work. I think it's actually just Honduras proper. It's not the, the water. After Vaughn allowed Otto to increase his fleet size twice and Cowboy to do it once, she thought there that would kind of help to take out some of the, the 
people bidding against her, and plus there's more colonies going into uh, play. So having more traders is good, and having larger fleets means more traders. Um, Demi bid, bid her up to 12 on the Bourbon Princess, and he ended up winning it. Um, cause she could have kept going. She could have outbid him. She had the ability to, but she wanted to keep money for the next time. Even though she can keep getting money, she just felt like going higher than 12 was just too much. It's another treasure year. Let's see what our event is. It's a company of Royal African Adventurers. And that's a new bee. We haven't had a lot of bees. So clam beds go down, uh, or pearl beds. Um, I don't think there are any right now. Do you remember when Demi lost his pearl beds before? I do. So the same breakdown of just three treasures going out. Each each of our new kind of alliance got one. Uh, only real difference was Otto opted to trade with one of the smuggling places instead of filling up a uh, cowboy's thing. He's seeing that cowboy's really going to be his competition for second place here. And so he's going to try and undercut him when possible and no longer is offering him his trade, which is too bad for Cowboy because Cowboy does have a new colony, the Belize Bayman, out on the board. And that's exciting for him. So let's turn up our next card. And it's Tortuga Pirates. So now we're seeing a bunch of bees. I wonder how shuffled I had this. I thought I shuffled it, but we saw a lot of the similar cards coming in chunks. But I guess that can happen with a thoroughly shuffled deck. But we have more plague. That's going to be really rough on a lot of people. So, um, well, actually, no, that's just going to be rough on Cowboy. Cowboy's the only person with a size 3 colony right now. And that's going to go all the way down to 1. That's going to hurt Cowboy quite a bit. I bet Otto is applauding the, the rats in their biting technique. Cowboy has configured his main fleet here as a slave fleet once again. That's going to allow him to boost the size of both these colonies. Demi's paid him a dollar. He's paying him a dollar in order that he will do the same with his colony here. Demi will get a return on that because he'll be getting three dollars in the future. Now, so that uneasy alliance, well, not, it's not, that deal is not going to keep them from bidding against each other, however, for the Tortuga Pirates. Demi would love to have something else he can do in the game other than just sit and wait for people to trade with him. Um, his, his heathen colonies aren't in striking distance of anyone, so he's not really able to do anything. So he's going to bid all out against Cowboy. He's got five. Cowboy's going to go six. Otto's going to chip in on Demi's behalf in order to beat Cowboy. And Cowboy's going to bid all the way, because that's how Cowboy does it. Uh, so Cowboy is 10 right now. He's willing to bid 9, because he wants to outfit his his um, colonies with, with soldiers. So that means that Otto's going to have to chip in 5 in order to help Demi out. But he wants to do it. He wants uh, to remain competitive against Cowboy. So Demi's going to take the Tortuga Pirates. And they're going to come out later, and that's going to be nice to see Demi on the on the water. And I bet he is really going to enjoy the ocean. That's going to bring us to a new year where we have more boats. I'm convinced my shuffling is not so great. So we have more plague as well. And I'm not really convinced. That plague is going to hit. Oh, this guy actually should have gone down before, shouldn't he? Um, that's going to hit... Or Demi, his colony is going to go all the way back down. But at least he has some Tortuga pirates, so he can trade with himself. That's great. And maybe Cowboy will help him out again. Um, probably will want to configure a slave fleet again himself. Well, no, cost him five to do that. And they're going to move up again soon. I don't think he's probably going to, unless he gets some funds from, from Vaughn, but she's not going to do that. All right. So, any other colonies that need to go down? Nope. Uh, Brethren of the Coast is back in, in play, so Brezza's back in action. Cowboy got the Pirates for 11, um, bidding against Vaughn. Otto didn't chip in this time. Um, just, he, he actually feels really great because he might be able to win if this next card, or get second place if this next card's an event. It's another treasure year, and we have another Pirate 
coming out. Um, and malaria. Each colony in the jungle loses a soldier. All right. So do, 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 do. that one's immune to malaria. This one's a smuggling port. No, no, it's not. It is just yeah. so this one's disrupted. Vaughn has offered to allow Demi to be part of the treasure team, so they'd split the four treasures four ways, um, leaving Brezza out now. If and only if he leaves alone her sugar mills uh, that she would then start to build again. Um, Demi's going to agree. That, that gives him a chance to not be in last place, assuming enough turns go by before an event comes up. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. He has better trade, trading capability of Brezza, and he can get money that way as well. So she's going to go ahead. They're going to go ahead and do that. And that's our new configuration. And then we have to bid on this new bumblebee. Final turn of the decade, next decade is going to see a lot of growth, colony growth, and that's going to be exciting, especially since we keep getting so many bumblebees. No, the game's over. Oh, okay. Britain at war. British card, well, that doesn't matter. I think the game ends right now, and I guess we can just look at who, who won. We can see the placement. Vaughn is for sure our winner. These dice have numbers, which also add to her total. Um, second to Otto. I think, yeah, Cowboy got a little spend happy, so he got third place. Um, if the game had continued, Cowboy probably would have caught up. I, I don't know, Otto was hoping the game would end, and it did. Uh, and then fourth is Brezza, who didn't ha wasn't looking like he was going to come back. He was just going to, I don't know. And then finally Demi. Demi didn't have, he finally got in. He finally got his pirates, and he finally got into the treasure fleet and started to get get paid for all his years of suffering in the jungle, um, but too little too late, and the game is over. So let's talk about my thoughts about this game that we just played. Um, start off by saying I don't, it's hard for me to play this game solitaire. This is the first time I've ever gotten through a full game of Lords of the Spanish Main Solitaire. I've done, I've started it a couple of times. It's just not pleasurable to me in the moment. It feels to me like writing a book does. I've never written a whole book either, but I've started. It's very like, it's work. Um, I, I think Douglas Adams once said he likes having had written a book, but he doesn't enjoy the actual process of writing a book. And that's kind of how I am as well, and how this game feels to me. There's a lot of satisfaction in seeing the story develop and seeing how things work, but um, in the actual moment, it's it's hard. Um, it was just a lot of like, kind of having these characters talk constantly in your head about what would they do, and I, I'm never fully convinced that I'm doing it right either. So there's that problem. I really like the game. Um, I'm going to review it sometime. It's just I need to get, get it played with other humans a few more times first, which is tricky, but I'll make it happen. Um, this game played out differently than it would otherwise, I've mentioned this already, because of its connection to careers, it's, it became apparent to a lot of people, and there was some kind of like half-hearted attempts at like taking her down a little bit, that Vaughn was going to be the, the winner, um, and since she was kind of the, she was kind of keeping the peace throughout the whole time, for the most part, just trying to kind of keep everyone balanced so no one really wanted to rise up and upset the, the order, and go pirate on her. We didn't see any pirates in the game. We saw a few attempts at privateering, but they didn't really go through, and thus there also wasn't much combat. In fact, there was none. Um, and part of that is just where people were positioned, and but mostly it was because it was okay to be second place. It's better to kind of be, you know, have a good shot of being second or third than to risk um, going down to fourth or fifth in order to, to get ahead, which is kind of what Brezza saw. He he took too big of a bite against Vaughn, and she had the opportunity to take him out, and she did. Took him down to fourth, um, and so there was that. Whenever, it, it always, the fact that so many games have just one winner always bothers me because, especially, like a lot of games are economic games, right? So in an economic game, most usually it's whoever has the most money wins, but it's like still you're the people who don't win tend to have thousands of dollars anyway, 
or millions of dollars anyway. So it's like, it doesn't really feel like you lose and that it's, it doesn't really incentivize me to really try so hard in those games because it's like, I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. There's a lot more people in the world that are worse off than I am. Um, but if you take that away, you get a situation like this where the competition changes. Um, and it feels truer, but maybe less of a exciting experience that you want when playing a game that you might want. Um, I, I would be perfectly happy playing this game in this situation where there was no one winner and there could be this kind of cooperation. Crusoe's Planet does that a lot and it, it allows for multiple winners and I appreciate that. So I'm excited to get back to careers. I, I've missed it. Um, I don't have to think near as hard when I'm doing that and, um, and it, it'll be fun to see, to see our first uh, teaching track mechanism. So I think I'll probably go ahead and uh, edit this together or just splice it together and then go ahead and get started playing that. Next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, English dash Pasha slash Rue leg one, two, that's two, careers.